Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, everyone, wherever you are. Uh, I'm over here in the UK, so it's the uh, early evening here. Um, and my name is Robin Moffat. I work at Confluent uh, as a developer advocate. Uh, Confluent, if you've not heard of us, we're one of the companies that contributes to the open source Apache Kafka project. And I'd like to spend the next 30 or 40 minutes talking about building streaming data pipelines with Apache Kafka and its surrounding ecosystem. So when we talk about streaming data pipelines, there's different things uh, entailed in that. Sometimes it's simply getting data from one place and streaming it over to another. Sometimes it's a bit more complex. Sometimes as the data passes through that pipeline, we want to modify it and transform it and enrich it along the way. So there are no slides. You'll be glad or disappointed to know. Um, I'll put some online afterwards. You can kind of go back to them and they talk about some of the components that I've shown. But they, this afternoon, this evening, wherever you are, is all just hands-on showing you this thing and talking about it. Um, I'll pause periodically to answer questions if we've got them. Um, and if not, we'll have a good uh, chat at the end and opportunity to. If you do the Twitters, you can follow me. I'm at I'm off. Uh, you can always contact me on Twitter there, uh, send me a message um, and uh, I'll help you out more than happily. So let's get started. The demo I'm going to show you, um, it's uh, available for you to go and try. You can go along to GitHub, to this repository, the demo scene repository. Um, I'll share this link wherever I can share these links with you. So on Twitter and if there's somewhere on the, uh, the conference website also. Um, but you can basically go and clone the repository and you can actually get to the demo script itself that I'm going through now. So you'll probably see my head bopping up and down because I've got like different screens going on. I've got the script on one of them. But the great thing about this is that it means that I've practiced it and the scripts I know works, but it means that you can take that script and you can go and try it out for yourself. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a stream of data coming in from somewhere. In our fictitious example, we've got data streaming in from a, a website application where people can leave reviews on the website. So the website's got a producer API and it's streaming messages into a Kafka topic. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're simply gonna have a look at those messages and then stream them straight on into Elasticsearch. So we're gonna use a tool called Kafka Connect for this and Kafka Connect's part of Apache Kafka. Whenever you see Kafka and systems hooking into it, then Kafka Connect is usually the tool that you should be using for that. So whether we're streaming data from Kafka down to Elasticsearch or indeed from a database into Kafka, which is what we'll do later on, Kafka Connect is that piece of the puzzle. So Apache Kafka itself provides you the broker for storing and streaming and transforming that data. Kafka Connect provides you that integration API. So let's go and do that. I'm using KSQL DB, which is part of a uh, Confluent platform. It's community licensed, and you can do a bunch of things with it, which I'm going to show you during the talk. But to start with, we can simply use it as an interface for our Kafka broker and for Kafka Connect. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to say, show me what topics I've got on my Kafka brokers. And it says you've got a couple of topics. One of them is called ratings. So this is the ratings topic to which ratings are being written continually. So we can just run a consumer against that. We can say print ratings. And it's going to say, well, here are those messages as they arrive in that topic. So if I pause the screen there and page up, you can see KSQL DB has said, well, I reckon the uh, value format of the messages, the third DB used for the value part of the message, I reckon it's Avro. So I'll deserialize them as that. The key format, it could be one of these different ones. We reckon it's probably an integer, but you can see the key and the value for the messages. You can see the timestamp, okay? So that's UTC, so it's uh, just gone half past seven at night over here in the UK, but that's the timestamp of the message as they arrive. So we can inspect those messages and we can see we've got a Kafka topic with data arriving continually. So the first thing we're actually going to do is we're going to take that data and we're going to stream it into Elasticsearch. So we're going to use Kafka Connect. Kafka Connect has got a REST API, so you can use the REST API directly. You can use a web-based interface. You can use Confluent Control Center. Um, you can also use KSQL DB. So KSQL DB wraps around Kafka Connect. And we can say, create a sync connector and give it a name. And then we say, which connector we want to use? Well, we're writing data to Elasticsearch, so we'll use the Elasticsearch sync connector. Where's our data? It's in a topic called ratings. Where's our Elasticsearch? It's on this host called Elasticsearch at this port. And we say, go and create that. It says, well, I've created it. And we can say, show connectors and say, well, is it working? And it says, we've got this one here, the Elasticsearch sync connector. And it says, it's running. 
which means that if we head over to Elasticsearch, we should see our data as it's arriving in our Kafka topic, arriving into our Elasticsearch index. So over here, I've got Kibana. So Kibana sits on top of Elasticsearch and gives us a nice visual front end for it. So if I hit uh, reload indices, we can see here, we've got one called ratings and we can see we've got some documents in it. Let's make that a bit bigger so you can see what's going on. So 3,257 documents, 3,262, that number's going up because new data is arriving in the Kafka topic. So it's arriving in the Elasticsearch index. And if we just pause for a moment and think about what we've done, we've run one piece of configuration to say, take data from this topic and go and stream it over there. And we can say, well, let's go and create an index pattern on top of that data. Uh, so an index pattern, let's Kibana, understand more about the fields that are available within it. And we tell it which is the timestamp field. And once we've done that, we can then go and have a look at the actual data as it flows in. So we go and click on this here. And we can see that data is flowing in basically in real time. If I set this to refresh every second and hit start on that, you can see, so it's 1936, which is the, uh, the time over here in uh, uh, BST, uh, UTC plus one, and that data is arriving continually. So it's arriving in the Kafka topic, Kafka Connect streaming it over into Elasticsearch. So you can use Kafka Connect with pretty much any system you can think of. You can use it with Elasticsearch, with Snowflake, with S3, with any database with JDBC um, support. You can write down to uh, flat files if you really want to, although it's probably not always a great idea. And you can ingest data from loads of different places. You can ingest data from databases, which I'll show you later, from message queues, from syslog endpoints, from REST endpoints, wherever you've got data that you want to stream into Kafka or from Kafka out to other systems, Kafka Connect is that integration API as part of Apache Kafka that does it for you. And it's just configuration to use. But what if we want to do a bit more with this data than simply dump it across into a target system? Let's have a little look at the data that we've got and we'll understand quite why that might be. So if we just add some of these uh, things into it, so we've got a channel and we've got a message, we've got the rating ID. So as this data is coming in, we've got various different fields within it. So we've got one here called the channel. This is the device that someone left the rating on. Now we can use this nice thing in Kibana here to look at the um, information about the data within it and it breaks it down. You can see we've got test information, but this is supposed to be a production system. We've also got kind of like production stuff, got iOS and so off but you've also got iOS dash test. So we've got data arriving in this source topic that we don't want in the target system. Now in the target system, I can click on that little magnifying glass there and exclude it from what's shown, but we're still shunting that data around. We're still storing that, that data in the target system. We're still inadvertently processing that data. Uh, if we forget to exclude it from our queries, we probably wanna get rid of that. We've also got this field here, user ID. We've got a user ID field, so that's who left that particular rating, but we don't know who that user is. We've got that information about a user up in a database somewhere, but if we think about bringing that into the target system and our target system has to join between two different uh, sets of data and denormalize it such that we can show it in a particular uh, uh, analysis, it's less easy to do when you hit the final system or you end up kind of like taking a stream of data and processing it as a batch. We can actually say as that data is arriving in Kafka, we can enrich it as it goes through. So let's do that. I'm going to disable this refresh here because it's going to uh, upset my Zoom session otherwise. So that's uh, paused. And now we're going to head back over here into KSQL DB. So what we're going to do is, let's remind ourselves, we've got a topic called ratings. We're going to take that ratings topic and instead of just filing it on downstream somewhere else, we're going to enrich and process it write it back onto another Kafka topic. And from that Kafka topic, then we could push that Kafka topic down to our target system. So let's do this. We're gonna create ourselves a stream against this topic. So KSQL DB, it's an event streaming database. It lets you do streaming ETL, stream processing against your data in Kafka. It also lets you build materialized views against your data in Kafka that you can then query directly. So we're going to mostly talk about streaming ETL here, streaming, processing, apply to data that's in a Kafka topic. We'll talk a little bit about the uh, materialized views later on. But within KSQL DB, 
we have two primary types of objects. We have a stream and we have a table. So let's create a stream to start with. So a stream is basically a Kafka topic, an unbounded series of events that continue indefinitely because it's unbounded, but with a schema. Because the data in Apache Kafka, it's just bytes. Kafka, it just takes bytes. Whereas we're going to say, well, we're going to start projecting fields and applying predicates and doing the kind of stuff that needs a schema. So we've actually got a schema in the data because the good people who wrote that data into the topic, they took the wise decision to serialize it in a way that it persisted that schema. They didn't say, oh, we'll just chuck some CSV data into the topic. And now that poor soul who reads the data from the topic has to figure out what's going on. Instead, they said, well, here's the schema for the data. We'll store that as it gets serialized onto the topic and that schema gets stored in the schema registry, which means that as a user, I come along, I can say, well, I've got data in a topic called ratings. It's in Avro format. So we're going to say create a stream ratings with this information. It says, OK, I've created the stream. So we can say, well, tell me about that stream. I don't quite believe that we've got a schema, but we have. Because key SQL DB is the consumer, it's pulled down that schema from the schema registry, and it can use that in creating that stream object. And because we've got a schema, it means that we can project fields. It means we can do this. We can say, show me just certain fields from that stream of data as it arrives. As messages arrive on that Kafka topic, pick out just those particular fields, and in this case, just write it to the screen. So again, we can see those, that data is ticking by. We can also say, well, remember that channel field here, where we've got data flowing in, and you've got kind of like iOS dash test, and we've got this test data that we don't want in that target system or that target topic for others to read from. So instead, we can do this. We can say, let's select just this particular set of information from our source stream and apply a predicate where the channel doesn't have test in it. So now we're pulling all this information in from that topic as it arrives. And you'll notice in that ch channel, there is no test data anymore because we've excluded it in that predicate. Now, all we're doing at the moment is writing that select out onto the screen. But the great thing with KSQL DB is we can say, well, actually take that and write it to a new topic. So we're going to say create stream and we call it ratings test as just select those particular fields. Sorry, not ratings test. That's the wrong one. We've given it the wrong name there. So I said I'd written the test script and it definitely worked. So now here we go. Create stream ratings test two. And that's still the wrong one because it could, should be called ratings uh, live. We'll get there eventually, third time lucky. So we've created a stream called ratings live, which has just got the data that doesn't include test in the particular field. If I say show topics, we can see we've got the two ones which I've created by accident. We've got a topic called ratings live. If I say print ratings live, you can see we've got the data in that. We've got the fields that we asked for in that select statement with the channel and no test data. So we said create stream as select. The as select says take the output of that continual select statement, write it into this stream. But KSQL DB streams are backed by Kafka topics. So the first create stream we did basically registered the existing topic. The second one, create stream as select, created a brand new Kafka topic or uh, populated an existing Kafka topic with the results of that select statement. I can do the same thing. We can also create a uh, test one, which is probably not going to work because it might do. Let's say create stream ratings test, and it is actually test data this time because we're saying where the channel is like test. It says, well, that exists already. So let's go a bit off piece. Let's say, okay, we're going to drop this particular stream. So drop that stream there. And it says, well, you can't really do that because at the moment you've got a query that's running. Let's say show queries. We've got these different queries that are running writing into that object I'm trying to drop, which would kind of not make sense if I, did, if I did drop it. So instead, we're going to say terminate that query first, and then we can drop that stream, which means that we can then create it like this. And now we've got new streams. We've got ratings live and ratings test. Ignore the test too. That was me uh, getting fat fingered. So ratings live is just our source stream with just those live events. The test one is the source stream with just the test events. So we can take that and we can uh, go and look at it further. We could describe it. So we can say, describe ratings live. And we can see we've got the schema just of those fields that we asked for. 
I'll turn my uh, trackpad off because that's getting kind of upset. Don't know why. I think my Mac knows that I'm doing a presentation and it's being unhelpful. So we'll disable that. Okay, so we've got this stream of data. It's arriving in this particular stream. I could say select star from ratings live and it says we need that bit as well. And so now we've got that data arriving on the source topic and it's now showing on this new one, this new stream here. And we could take that stream and we could write it to Elasticsearch if we wanted. We're just simply taking a source, transform it, write it out to a new topic and then write that over to the target. But we're not finished yet. We're going to take that source data and we're going to add in information about our particular users. So if we remind ourselves what the fields are here, we've got a field called user ID and we want to be able to say, well, if it's user ID 42, we want to know from a database, well, that's so-and-so person and this is their email address. This is their club status. Are they a VIP customer? Are they a brand new customer? If they're a really important customer and they're leaving a bad rating, we probably want to know about that. So we'll maybe process their, their data differently. So let's do that now. Let's head over to our database. So we're going to terminate that query and we're going to do this. We're going to split the screen and we're going to launch into a database. So here I'm using MySQL, but what I'm going to show you applies to any relational database. So we're going to take data from a relational database. We're going to take a snapshot of it and stream it into our topic. But we're then going to capture every single subsequent change to that data into our topic. So within my database, we've got a table called customers. You can probably guess what kind of data sits in that table. It's information about our customers. If we show just the first five rows, we can see they've got an ID, they've got a first name, a last name, an email address, and their club status. So we're going to do things later on and say, if it was a platinum user who left a rating that was less than three stars out of five, we'll call that like a negative review for a really important customer. We're actually going to route that to a separate topic because we want to process it differently. But let's get this data into our Kafka topic. Again, we're going to use Kafka Connect for this. So we're going to take this data and at the top of the screen, we're back in KSQL DB. Again, we're using KSQL DB as the wrapper around Kafka Connect. And if we go up to the top here, we can see we've got, we're creating a source connector. We're using a connector from the Debezium project. So Debezium is an open source project. They've got a ton of really good connectors for Kafka Connect for doing CDC out of source systems. So there's MySQL, there's Postgres, there's Mongo, uh, there's an Oracle one they're working on, there's SQL Server. So you've got data in relational systems you want to get into a Kafka topic. Most of them, or all of them, I think, use uh, what's called log-based change data capture. So actually going down to the transaction log of that database to get the data in. So we hit enter on that. It's created that source connector, show connectors, make sure it's working. And it says it is working. So here's our source connector for MySQL, and it says it's running there. Which means if we go to show topics, we can see you've got a new topic in the system. We've got our existing original source one here called ratings. We've got that little accident, the ratings test two. We've got our two ones that we created here, ratings live and ratings test, where we split that source stream into different streams based on the channel value. And now we've got this one called customers. So I can say print customers. Now I'm gonna say from beginning. So from beginning is important. We're gonna talk about offsets in a moment because with the data in a Kafka topic, at the moment, we've simply been saying, as that new data arrives, write it out to the screen or write it out to a new topic. But because Kafka stores data for as long as we tell it to, it means that we can actually go back and reprocess that set of data. And it also means if we say print this topic, by default, KSQL DB will sit there and wait for things to print. We can say print data from the beginning of the topic, and it shows us all the data that's already in the topic. And then it says press Control C to interrupt because we might get new data arriving. And you can see the kind of data that we get through. We've got the user ID, we've got their first name, their last name, and so on. So we've now got a snapshot of what's in the database in a Kafka topic. Let's show you what happens if you create or if you change data in that database. Let's go and create a row in MySQL. So we're going to do an insert into. I'm using insert into, but obviously the databases that we're hooking up to Kafka are the databases which underpin most of the existing applications that businesses tend to use. Our CRMs, our inventory platforms, all of those use databases. 
And the cool thing here is we can take that existing set of data in our existing systems in our businesses and stream that data and changes to that data into Kafka. And once the data is in Kafka, the world is our oyster because most systems and applications integrate with Kafka. So we can now get that data from what we thought was kind of like a closed database, stream it into Kafka, and now we can write analytics against it, write applications against it, and do loads of fun stuff. So let's insert a row into our database. We do an insert into customers uh, over here in MySQL. We've inserted a new row. And as I did it, it showed up in our Kafka topic here because that uh, consumer that KSQL DB is running at the top there, it just sits there waiting for new messages to arrive. If I did make another change, we say, right, we're going to update the customers. So at the bottom of the screen, I'm going to enter the command. But watch ha what happens at the top of the screen. I do an update and the updates arrive straight away on that Kafka topic. So we've got a Kafka topic with information about our customers. The customers come from a table with a primary key. The primary key is that user, that customer ID. And we can see that here. The key is uh, picked up as uh, the, the ID from the customer information. And in KSQL DB, let's just move this and move this a little bit so we can see what's going on. In KSQL DB, we're going to create a new object to sit on top of that Kafka topic. Because to work with data from Kafka in KSQL DB, it has to be a stream or a table. So we've built a stream already to so sit on top of that ratings topic where it's a topic with a schema, and we saw that schema. Now we're going to create a table, which is the other type of object in KSQL DB. So the table looks like this. If I copy it from my little cheat sheet down here, and it should look like that. Create table customers. So it's saying create a table called customers against this existing topic. It's also in Avro, and we could use protobuf, we could use JSON schema, anything that persists that schema. And we're saying the primary key for our customer information is this customer ID field. So a table in KSQL DB is a value for a given key. Now that value might change. In the same way in the database world, when we go and insert something and then update it, that value changes. It's the same thing in the KSQL DB world. A stream is just an unbounded series of events. This happened, and then this happened, and then this happened. A table is the state. A table is, for this given key, what's the value? But both are built on top of a Kafka topic. So this is the really, really cool thing. We're taking a series of events, a stream of events, and that's all you need to be able to either work with streams or tables, because from a stream of events, you can build a table of state. So let's take that, and what we can do now is we can query that table, and I'm going to run this command here. I mentioned, talked earlier briefly about offsets, and I said print this topic from the beginning. Well, when we're running KSQL DB commands, we say we can set this particular session property uh, called auto offset reset. We're going to set it back to the earliest because we're going to query our table. So we say select these values from here, emit five, just show me the first five rows from my KSQL DB table. And if I go down to uh, my SQL and say, select the first five rows from the table, it says, well, here we go. Customer ID one is this, customer ID two is that. And what we've got in the database down here at the bottom of the screen matches what we've got in our KSQL DB table at the top of the screen. But our KSQL DB table is built on top of a Kafka topic. Let me show you what happens if we change data. So at the top of the screen, let's just query that information for from customers where customer ID equals 42. And it's not happy with that because it's a string. And it says, here is customer ID 42. Customer ID 42 is Mr. Rick Astley, and he's got an email address, but no club status. And if I go down to my database, I'm going to my SQL and I run the same query from customers where ID equals 42. It says, okay, here's Mr. Rick Astley, he's got an email address, but no club status. So my source, and what we're showing in KC equal DB, they agree with each other. So now let's give them a club status. So we make an update to the database. You'll notice at the top of the screen, it says press control C to interrupt. It's a continuous query. As the state changes from our table, we're gonna see that update come through. So the database at the bottom of the screen, we do an update, we give them a club status. And at the top of the screen it says, okay, that state has changed. So I'll show you the new row. And we say, oh, we made a mistake. Obviously it can't be bronze. 
definitely got to be platinum status. So about that change in the database and the case equal DB table reflects that change. But here's the difference. If I say select the current state of that key from a case equal DB table, so where customer ID equals 42, what's the current state? Case equal DB says, this is the current state. The current state is 42, uh, email address this, club status, platinum. And it's building that from a Kafka topic. Okay, I'm seeing messages saying that you can't hear me. Can uh, someone confirm or deny? Just send a, a message on the webinar chat saying if you can hear fine. Okay, you can all hear fine, good stuff. So it's been recorded. So if your audio dropped out, then you can watch the recording later. And people are actually awake and this is great. Okay, so we've got a table showing at the top. It's showing the current state and it's built on top of a Kafka topic. But what about if we want to know, well, what happened to this object when it was created? When was it last updated? How many times has that club status changed? Well, this is where a stream comes in. So we can do this. We can say, let me find the correct command. We're going to say create stream. So in case equal db, we're going to say create a stream for customers with the same syntax, but we're just saying create a stream this time, as opposed to create a table. It's on top of the same topic. Create the stream. So now if I say select these values from the customer table, we say here is the current state based on that Kafka topic of replaying those events to work out the current state. It says, here is the current state. If I run that same query, I say from customers stream, it says here are the series of events in that topic where it matches that predicate that we've given it. But both the stream and the table come from the same topic. And whether you use a stream or a table depends on the semantics of the query that you're asking. Are you asking what's the state for this key? Are you asking what are the series of events? If I'm writing an application, which needs to know when someone changes their email address because I need to go and do something about it or they get their club status changes to platinum. So I need to trigger something which sends them a nice little welcome pack. I want to subscribe to that stream of events. I want to be driven by events. If I want to join to that uh, Kafka topic to enrich a series of events and basically do a lookup against that data, then I want the table. I would say, what's the current state for that key? And we're gonna do that now. We're going to take this information from our ratings as they've been flowing in. So if you remember those, we saw those first time around. Let's uh, just move that down there. We're going to say select the rating information and our customer information from ratings and do a left join to our customer information on user ID equals user ID. Oops, don't want that bit in there because that'll confuse things. <coughs> So now as the ratings arrive, it's gonna get a full screen of information at the moment, because if you remember, we set offset to earliest. So this is now going back through that whole ratings topic from the beginning of time when it started getting populated. And it's taking every single rating, let me just pause it there, every single rating as it arrives, it's saying, well, who is that particular user ID? Do a join out to that uh, customer's table and then register the information. Add in the username, add in the club status. And instead of writing it to the screen, which kind of gets boring watching it scroll by, we're going to say, take that information and go and write it to a new key SQL DB stream. And it's a stream because it's a series of events, those ratings events to which we're simply denormalizing and adding in additional information. So here's our Kafka topics. We can actually um, specify the name of the topic this time. By default, when you create a stream, it, the, the topic is the same as the stream name we're actually just saying, uh, give it a different topic name. We're gonna select those values from here and init changes. And now it just says, okay, I've created that query. We say show streams. We've created a new stream, ratings and customer data. This time the Kafka topic is called ratings enriched instead of just inheriting the stream name. And I can do this. I can say, describe that stream. It says, here's the schema for that stream. I could also say, describe extended. And now it says, well, here's more information about it. We can see what's writing into that particular topic. If I say do that again, we can see what, how many messages have we processed. So here's our total messages that we processed, 5,610. When was the last one that we processed? It was 1859 UTC, which is kind of like now. And if I rerun that query, you can see that value has gone up, 5,645. So this is our streaming ETL. 
This is our series of events, our series of facts arriving, being enriched with our reference information written out to a new Kafka topic. And in the moment, we can take that Kafka topic and go and put it into Elasticsearch again. So now the other thing we're going to do is we're going to create a second stream, which is going to daisy chain off this existing one. So now we're going to say create a stream of unhappy platinum customers. So we know about who our customers are because we've got that customer information brought in from the database into a Kafka topic. We know the rating uh, star rating is it one to five based on those rating events. So you can say, well, do a join between our stream of events and our reference information. If the person who left a bad rating, the star rating was less than three, and they're a platinum customer, then write it out to a new stream, which is a new Kafka topic. So here's our logic. We say, here's our uh, predicate where stars is less than three and club status is platinum. And we've gone and created another one, show streams. We've got another stream called unhappy platinum customers. And now we go and put it all into Elasticsearch. So create a sync connector, same as before, but this time we're saying, pull in the data from these two topics here, ratings enriched and unhappy platinum customers. So Kafka Connect, you can specify multiple topics and that's created a connector. So show connectors, says it's running, which means if we head over into Elasticsearch, that's gonna show us the data as it's arriving from that source topic. So you can see here, we've got the um, how many unhappy platinum customers in the last 15 minutes. So we're obviously not doing a very good job. That's a lot of unhappy customers in a 15 minute period. We're gonna set it to refresh. So these values are changing continually because new data is arriving continually. And a one second refresh is probably not such a great idea from a CPU, but it gives you this idea that you can actually do a real time view of your data, your enriched data, as it passes through Kafka. And you can break it down as you want to and see the different messages and all that kind of fun stuff that you do with Kibana. I want to show you one more thing, and that's this concept of materialized views. So far, we've taken data from a Kafka topic. We've said, well, that data's got a schema. We're going to enrich that data. We're going to uh, join it out to a separate uh, set of information, some reference information. We're not going to go and put it into a target system and do lookups out to our source database. We're actually going to pull that source database into our Kafka topic and keep that updated in real time. We can enrich that data, push it down to Elasticsearch, streaming ETR. Kind of like, here's our streaming pipeline. It's what it says on the can. But we're also going to see how KSQL DB can build these materialized views that we can query. So let's close that there and give ourselves a clear screen to work from. And what we're going to do now is we're going to build ourselves an aggregate. So if you think about an aggregate, an aggregate is, well, here's a good question, a little exercise for you at home. Is it a stream or is it a table? And I'll start typing it and you'll see straight away what it is. It's a table because it's the value for a given key. And in this case, at a point in time, because we're doing a windowed aggregate. As new information arrives, that aggregate updates. So for that given key, the value is changing. We're doing a count, uh, we're doing a collect list. If we were doing a sum, the value would be going up or down depending on the uh, inbound data. But it's not just a continual series of events. So it's a table. So we're going to create ourselves a table. It's going to be ratings per customer per 15 minute window. So select the customer name, how many ratings have they left? Do a collect list against the star rating. So every single star rating gets appended to this list pull it in from our source stream that we created before. So you see this idea of daisy chaining them. So you build a source, a main one, that's gonna be useful for lots of different applications. And then you build on top of it for additional functionality. We're doing a tumbling window. So every 15 minutes, we get a new window. You don't have to have a tumbling window. You could just do an aggregation over all the data you've got. But if we start thinking about unbounded data and the concept of aggregating all of it, it starts to make less sense. Most of the time we're asking the kind of question of our data, how many things have happened in the last minute, hour, day, week, something, but it involves time. But you don't have to, but we are doing here. So it's a tumbling window. You also have hopping windows and session windows if you want. And we're grouping it by the customer name. So we go and create the table. And if I say show tables, you'll see we've got two tables. We've got our existing one, our customer's table, which sits on top of that Kafka topic there. We've also got a table here which is also writing to a Kafka topic. 
So if we want, we can simply use this to build pre-calculated aggregations, which are then streamed down to a target system. We think about like traditional analytics. Here's our aggregation. Instead of landing a bunch of data and doing batch jobs to build those aggregates, you can build those aggregates on the fly as the data is arriving and push that down to a target system so it's continually updated. But we're not going to do that here. We're actually going to take that data and we're going to query it. So the same query that I've been showing you all along is what's known as a push query. And I've pointed at the screen, I've said, notice how it says Control-C to cancel, because it's a continuous unbounded query. Data arriving in Kafka is unbounded. So the queries are unbounded. We don't know if we've finished reading all the data, so we just keep on running. And maybe the data will be arriving continually. Maybe there won't be any data for a minute, an hour, but it's unbounded, we don't know. So this is what we get if we query the database table. It says, here are the time windows and press control G, control C to interrupt. It's a push query. As the new data arrives, then we will see that echoed out to the screen or the aggregate will update and refresh itself on the screen. So we saw there, here's our time window for 1900 uh, up to 191459. And as these new events are arriving, the count is going up. So we've got a new event arriving. It's getting appended to this collect list here, but the state is changing. And so it's getting emitted out to the screen here. We can subscribe to that from our applications if we want to and subscribe to that series of events. And we can push that down to a target system and update aggregates in place on a target system. But what about if we want to know here and now, what's the value? We just want to do a lookup. We just want to query it. We want to write an application which says, Rika's saying, or someone's saying, this customer here, Rika Blaisdell, how many reviews has she left? I don't want to know like a continual update. I just want to know here and now, how many has she left in the last 15 minutes? But in that case, we use what's called a pull query. So a pull query is very, very similar to a push query, except we don't say emit changes. We just write a query that looks like we're talking to a relational database. Select these values from this place with this predicate. My full name is Rika Blaisdell and the timestamp, let's see if I can get this right with my time zones. It's the 20th of October and it was sometime after uh, 1900. So let's go for this one. And it says, here is the current value for that time window. Well, we could dial the time back a little bit and say, just show me the previous two time windows. It says, there are the two time windows, but this is the current value for that aggregation. So this is our materialized view concept. So key SQL DB, I've not talked about the guts of it. There are separate talks, which I'll tweet. And if there's somewhere else to share them, I will also share them there. There's like introduction to key SQL DB and talk about how key SQL DB is built on top of Kafka streams, which is stream processing library as part of Apache Kafka. And because of all of this, it's scalable, it's distributed, it's fault tolerant, it does all of these things. And it means that we can take data in a Kafka topic and build a stateful aggregation that's maintained by key SQL DB that's backed by a Kafka topic that we can push down to a target system, but that we can also query directly. So we can query it directly here and say, well, has that value changed? And we can see that value has changed. If we query it again, at some point, it will probably change again. If I'm sat here doing this, you can see it went to 61 ratings, then I should be using a push query because I'm saying, well, obviously I want to know if that's changed. So then I want KSQL DB to push to me when it changes. But actually I just want to know what's the current value and that's fine, that's answered my question to drive my application or whatever I'm building. And with KSQL DB, it has a REST API. So on top of that REST API, there's a Java client, there's community, uh, I think Python and Go clients as well, which means that you can write your applications querying this state directly. So let me show you this before I finish up and show you a couple of links. We're gonna go into KSQL DB, uh, into, it's, it's all running in a Docker container. And we're going to say, let's set this environment value here. And then we're going to run a REST call against it. So here we're going against the, uh, the query endpoint for KSQL DB. We're running that same select query as before. Select these values for this particular user and the window start date we've set to five minutes or 15 minutes ago. And it says, here you go. Here's the user, it's Rika Blaisdell. There've been 75 different reviews. This is what all those different reviews were. This is not so well illustrated on a bash command line, other than I've run curl to go and look up a value for a given key against this materialized view store. <coughs> Excuse me. So that's all I would like to show you today. 
um, I have a final useful slide to share you. So developer.confluent.io um, is where you can go and get tons of tutorials and podcasts and uh, video links and all sorts of stuff to go and learn more about Kafka. So from there, you can get like discount codes for Confluent Cloud. You can go and find these demos. Head over to Twitter, at Armoff, follow me on there. Um, follow me for the links. I'll tweet links out to this talk, out to the demo and all the rest of it. And with that, thank you very much for everyone's time this evening, this morning, wherever you are in the world.